Hi guys, good morning and welcome to Primus Learning here. Uh, this morning, I'll be showing you how to create a simple easy to instance and log in, in there and install a few things as you will. So to create an EC2 instance, the first thing you need to do is to go to EC2. So you can search EC2 here, but if you have recently visited it, you should have it right here on your screen. This is the new con AWS console. This is the way it looks. But yeah, let's go to the console here and search for EC2. So once you get into the EC2 console, um, I'll be creating an EC2 instance. But before I do that, I want to make sure that I have a key pair that I will use uh, for to be able to access uh, the EC2 instance. So let me get to the key pair section. So I want to create a key pair. I'll create a key pair called <clears throat> Primus Learning Demo key pair so this is the name i'll give my key pair i'll make it a dot pem file and i'll create my key pair so my key pair has been created and downloaded and it's a dot pem file that is what i'll use to access the the ec2 instance i'll create this ec2 instance with that key pair uh, right now, let's go to the EC2 dashboard and click on instances. So we want to launch an instance, go to launch instances. Now we want to select the AMI of uh, the instance we want to create. Remember an AMI is a template that simply contains the software configuration, uh, that is the operating system, the application server, and different applications. And uh, these are required such that the EC2 instance can be launched. So uh, AWS tells us you can select an AMI provided by AWS, our user community, or the AWS marketplace. So we want to select one of these AMIs that are provided by AWS. And the type of instance that we want to create can be, we can select, we decide to create a Linux instance. You can decide to create a Windows instance. So in this circumstance, I want to create a Windows, uh, a Microsoft Windows Server 2019. Uh, let's see which version we can create. Base 2019 with containers. Nope, let's create the other one up there. So let's create this one. Let's select this one, this free tier one. All right, so it's asking us choose an instance type. So we need to choose an instance type. Notice that T2 micro is free tier eligible. So we'll select T2 micro. These are smaller instances and they are low cost um, instances. You see they have about, uh, this one we're selecting has just one uh, memory. You can add that if you want. VCP uses one. EBS only and so on and so forth. So we'll select this option and go to next. So the next thing is to decide the number of instances. For instance, you wanted two or three or four or five instances, you will just provide the number here. Uh, there's one thing to note, you can add this into an auto scaling group, depending on your workload, so that as your workloads increase, the instance uh, automatically, the instances automatically uh, scale up. Uh, if your workload reduces, they can scale down, but we, we are not seeing this now. We'll look at uh, auto scaling in our next edition of uh, this program. So we've selected one instance and want to create it within this default VPC. We'll learn how to create VPCs and then we'll create a VPC to be working from. But at now, as at now, we'll use this, uh, this uh, default VPC. So let's select the subnet uh, where this instance will be launched. So we want to select US East 1, which is default. And then uh, use a subnet. So we can enable a subnet, host name. Want to leave this 
enabled results based IP4. So it will give it an IPv4 address. Capacity will leave it at open. The IAM row we want to keep it at nothing for now. So we take select known. We'll learn what IAM is in another video and we'll explain this uh, further for you and help you um, understand what IAM is all about. So we'll leave the rest um, default and we'll not add anything here and we'll go to add storage. So here you can actually add your storage, increase your gigabyte size from 30 to any number that you want. Uh, you see this machine is a general purpose SSD type of machine. Um, you can encrypt, you see you can encrypt using the default keys. So I'll just encrypt using the default keys. You can, so which means this machine is encrypted. It is encrypted. Any data that is stored in this machine is encrypted. So you can add a volume, an EBS volume. And uh, so this is basically your storage that you're adding to have um, you know, another drive on your system where you can map and get a, a lot more storage. This is the flexibility that comes with cloud computing. Imagine um, I have my space in this laptop which is running out. <laughs> the space in this laptop is running out. So let's go here and see. You see it's running out. Imagine that I could create another one and just add here or mount it up here. It will be amazing. This is the opportunity that this new volume, if you add it, would give you in this machine. So you want to always add tags for your workloads. I can just say environment for this one say dev this is a development environment and maybe say the name of this is uh, primus learning demo machine let's just call it that way all right i'll go to security configuration so you want to select a security group you could select an existing security group or you create a new one so we'll create a new security group and we'll call it primus learning um, security group so you can open ports depending on the services that you want. If you wanted to add, uh, maybe this is this is RDP, right? Like you can remote desktop into this machine through this port right here. And this is allowed for everybody. You can decide to put it only for this machine, right? So that I will be the only one to remote access this machine. So you're locking it down to me being able to access it. You can add HTTP and other rules if depending on your use case. So for this use case, we'll leave it at this. We'll review if all our details are good and then we'll launch. Now we created a key pair already. Remember the key pair we created called Primus Learning Demo Key Pair. This is what we we'll use uh, to launch this instance. It is the same keeper we would use to decrypt the key that we would, would use to log into this machine. So we can launch this machine. Um, it's launching. So it will take just a few seconds to get this up and running. You see, you can actually create a laptop or a machine in just a few few clicks uh, and, and you'll be able to run your workloads and test out your things. Uh, as you will, rather than the olden days where you had to, you know, order an instance or order a server and it would take a month to come reach you and then you do all the work that you had to do on it before uh, having your workloads on it, for instance, configuring it, networking, and all of those things. Uh, but we took just a few minutes and here we are with an instance that is already run, running and we can actually log into this instance. So it has an IP address, a public IP address, which is assigned here. It has these details down there that you can take a look at. Now let's connect to this machine. All right, so to connect to this machine, there are different ways to connect to an EC2 instance that is created in AWS. You can connect through session manager. If you say have session manager installed, you can connect, connect through RDP client. You can connect through the EC2 serial 
console. But for now, we'll connect using the RDP client. So you can download the RDP client here if you don't have it and uh, connect to this instance using it. Now it will take a while for us to be able to decrypt the password because the instance is still initializing. It has to be in a good state before we'll be able to decrypt the password. But to you see it tells you, please wait at least four minutes after launching an EC2 instance before trying to retrieve the auto-generated um, password. So wait for a while to get this instance going before we can uh, actually decrypt the password. So that's the, the, the username that we would use to log in will be pre, uh, administrator and the password will use the key pair that we downloaded earlier to be able to decrypt the password and get a password to log into the EC2 instance. So that is where we are for now. Let me just purse this. And then once it's ready to go, I'll come back, decrypt the key, and we continue from there. So I think this machine should be ready to go, guys. Welcome back. Um, so let's uh, get our password. So click on get password. You see it's ready to go. Uh, and to be able to decrypt your password, you have to browse. So browse here and get the downloaded key pair. This is the downloaded key pair. And then you simply hit on decrypt and it decrypts the password and you can see the password right here. I'll just copy this password and save it somewhere uh, that I would use to log in. So the, 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 the remote desktop file that you downloaded, you can simply click on it to connect to this instance. So I've clicked on that remote desktop and it's, uh, it's picked up the administrator uh, username and now it's asking for a password the decrypted password that you copy it you can simply use it to log into this instance and it is asking you to verify that it is you the certificate is not from a trusted certifying blah 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 authority just say yes and continue so it's logging you into the ec2 instance and guys you see we are logging in we are in we are almost in and that's it. You see, uh, it's starting off just as a Windows instance or a Windows laptop it starts on. So you can actually see that we've launched an EC2 instance in no time. We have it up and running. We can uh, install whatever thing we want in this instance, in this EC2 machine, in this laptop, call it. So it is very easy in in AWS or in cloud computing to launch machines to get your workloads up and running in no time. In basically five minutes, you can launch machines. If you have your environment prepared already, 
ready to go. You can learn, launch um, machine servers and get ready with your workloads. So this is what I wanted to show you. A normal machine, you can log in here and do whatever you, you, you want to do. It is a normal machine like others. As, as it completes its boot processes, uh, you see, you see it's a, we have a server manager. You can actually use this machine to control other machines. So it's different from a typical laptop, right? That it's a server. So you can use this server to manage resources in other, <coughs> in other um, places or in other locations. So far away from here, you can actually manage resources. Uh, that are connected to this machine. You see, everything looks like a Windows machine, guys. You can store your documents here, you can download, you can do stuff in this uh, machine. This is just what I wanted to show you today, guys. It was a quick video to show you how to create EC2 instances in AWS. We did create this EC2 instance logged in and we see that everything is working just fine. To log out of it, you can just X out of here and say, okay, and we're ready to go. Remember to always clean up after you do your demos or after you do whatever you're doing. So I would terminate this instance. I don't need it again. You can test your stuff in EC2 instances and terminate them as you want. This one can, uh, can be terminated right away. I don't have to use it anymore. So terminate. And yes, it's shutting down. You, you can see I, I've shut it down. I brought up an EC2 instance, did what I had to do, and I'm shutting it down. I want to keep the video short, guys. Tell me what you feel in the comment section. Uh, let's have a discussion. If you have any questions, post them. If you have any, any comments to make, please leave them, make them civil. Uh, tell us at primuslearning.org what you think, um, and we'll be ready to help you anytime, any moment uh, we get your email or your text. Thank you for watching and have a great rest of your day. Mm -hmm.